In the last few years, I've been in the vanguard of seeing corporate maternity coaching established in the UK. And one of the things that's really come across clearly to me is the role played by a manager in supporting a new mother through that transition or enabling a dad to have decent conversations about work-life balance. So for me, this resource plays a really key role in equipping managers to tackle that area sensibly and sensitively. I'm an organisational change consultant. I've practised and studied in that for 20 years now. That means really helping organisations look at how they shift their culture, their practice, and make progress and achieve the things that they're looking to do. So a whole range of different things. My particular interest in this whole area of parenting and flexible working, I suppose, was really sparked by my own personal transition. Decided to have children in my early 40s and really discovering firsthand what it's like to grapple with the pressures, practical pressures and emotional pressures of having a young family and trying to work and have a professional career as well. I have two sons myself, so for me, knowing that the year in which I, I was a mother of two the first time was one of the most challenging years for me, really, the whole balancing act and, and juggling. So I know firsthand about the, the challenge that that entails. And I'm passionate about thinking that, that it's possible to be committed to both work and family and to do well at both. I'm Rob Williams, I'm the Chief Executive of the Fatherhood Institute. We're a think tank, really, and we research into how men impact on their children, um, for good or for bad in some cases. Um, we also look at how fatherhood's changing because it's changed enormously. I'm an employment solicitor. I was very heavily involved in a case called Blundell and St Andrew's Catholic School, which was at the time the first case which decided what it meant to return to the same job at the end of maternity leave. Working Families is an organisation which knows that it is possible for everybody to do well at work as well as being a successful parent at home. To achieve that vision, we work with organisations, with employers large and small. We are trying to help them gather the evidence and the experience to create workplace cultures which are flexible and supportive of the parents and carers within them, but crucially, which also deliver high performance results. My name is Gaynor Francis and I've been working for KPMG for five years now. Part of my role is to really provide an environment for parents, mothers and fathers, where they can reach their potential but also manage their work and their home responsibilities in a way that is, is right for them. Richard Hardy, I'm the non-executive chair of UBS Limited. I'm the executive sponsor uh, of a network which has been established where employees come together to share their experiences of the different passages of life, so becoming a mother or father for the first time uh, is an obvious example. Uh, and they can talk to um, experts whom we introduce, but they can also hear from other members of staff how they've coped with the um, strains and how they can be helped. I'm Matt Fletcher. I'm a manager at Attic Media. Attic Media are a digital media company. Um, we employ quite a number of male staff, um, a number of whom are dads, and I've recently become a dad myself. You're likely to become a bit more responsible. You're likely to become a bit more... Um, reliable probably, you're aware suddenly that you've got a dependent um, who's completely dependent on you. Um, so I think you know communication, communication with your partner, communication with your child, all those skills are skills that you can um, and you, you should take into the workplace um, and they can be very appealing to, to an employer. My name is Ravi Chand, I work for the Home Office as their Head of Equality and Diversity. Maternity and paternity in the workplace uh, is an important part of a manager's role. Managers who really understand maternity paternity issues in the, in, in the workforce, in their people, uh, and understand the benefits to the business of keeping people in the organisation and supporting them, generally have better performing teams. So what's the business case for managing maternity and paternity well? Why does it matter? Well, there are three areas. The first really is about the immediate retention of a person going through that transition. 
The second point is about leadership, about having a diverse group of people in leadership in the organisation. And the third area is about being a 21st century employer. We can also consider what are the commercial or the service benefits to the organisation, which can be gained through having a more flexible working arrangement. Um, for a private sector organisation, that might be looking at their employability, um, their brand, uh, their reputation and those things which are really external facing into the uh, into the world. From a public sector point of view then that's really about where service efficiencies and effectiveness as well as their reputation can be affected. It's madness to carelessly lose someone when you needn't do so. Men will drift away. Um, they won't tell you that they're stressed because of their home life balance, they'll just go and get another job. There are real benefits to managers not having to retrain staff, not having to recruit new people and have the recruitment costs, which can be significant by bringing people in, where they fail to retain uh, women, for example, who've, who've had to take time out um, to have children. It's about ensuring that the person remains engaged while they're away from work on, on maternity leave or paternity leave. It's about ensuring that when they come back to work, they remain engaged and feel valued as an employee. It's about recognising that, that many people who are parents can be the most loyal and productive employees within a team once they've got some kind of family-friendly working. They're going to look to the employer for stability and for, you know, for the long term. They're going to be in it for the long haul. And I think as an employer, you can really... Um, you can make the most of that and you can reciprocate that loyalty by giving um, flexibility and giving um, a stable um, working environment and career development. And I think over time that can be a really um, mutually beneficial relationship between the employer and the dad. Research consistently shows that those organisations that have a good gender balance on the board outperform those that don't, so they provide a better return for shareholders. Therefore, if you want women on the board, you're probably going to need to support them through the transition to motherhood and beyond. And equally, having dads on the board enables you to have people with a broader perspective than those who've had to focus narrowly on career and, and not have the kind of work-life balance that many fathers these days require. There is a hard-nosed issue here in the organisation about a financial benefit in retaining people, a financial benefit in keeping the corporate knowledge that people have developed over a period of time in the organisation in the organisation and not losing it sometimes to competitors, to other organisations or completely from your industry. We invest a lot of time in training uh, and in ensuring that staff are in the right slot in the, in the organisation and have a good career path. And so to disrupt that would, would clearly be um, a waste of resources, a waste of effort. There are direct performance gains for the business. So it's really important to think about mothers and fathers and indeed carers more widely in your organisation and make sure that you're building the kind of supportive and inclusive culture that will enable them to give of their best to you. The third element of the business case is a broader one. We've got the arguments about retention and leadership, but thirdly is the point about really being a, a 21st century employer. If you're handling maternity and paternity well and you have in place family-friendly policies and a family-friendly culture, then you're also going to be engaging the people that are coming through the workplace increasingly, Generation Y and Z, those people who may have a, a very different perspective on work-life balance from that which was there some years ago and really expect the workplace to, to fit with interests outside of work in a flexible way. The business consists of people giving large parts of their lives to uh, make the business prosper, to help each other. And we think that in return, we must be very careful with those lives and we must respect what it is that the staff are doing for us. And we must also respect the part that they're prepared to give the firm in their lives, which is so far and probably no further. Uh, and so I think that all of that um, gives the 
question of maternity and paternity um, a rather higher um, a higher aspiration as far as the firm is concerned than the more practical obvious points. When you enable your people to feel that you trust them, when you create working cultures which are flexible where people have autonomy and control, there is a, a direct relation there to their engagement, i.e. how committed they feel to you and to the job in hand. And then there's a direct correlation from engagement to high performance. So it's a very straight line. Flexibility feeds straight into high performance and the people who are most likely or most acutely to feel the need for flexibility are the mothers and fathers and other carers on your staff.